And we are back. Another episode of The Q with Quincy Avery. We have a special guest, Trey Lance of the San Francisco 49ers on today. Trey, what is good? What's good? What's good? What's good? Appreciate you having me, bro. Oh, you appreciate me having you? No, I appreciate you getting on. I know you got a, a busy, a hectic schedule. Uh, We're not going to kill you. I did not know how many fans you had in San Francisco. I could tell by the faithful, that. man. I'm telling you about yeah. the faithful, man. You did. You told me that that the San Francisco 49ers were better than any any fan, whatever you guys call each other in the in the country. So Without I'm, a doubt. Take, <laughs> I'm gonna take your word on that. Uh, but but this show we chill, we vibing, not too serious. But I think that a lot of people know like the Trey Lance that we see on TV, whatever, whatever. What do you what do you think is a thing that enough people don't know about Trey? Like, what is something that you wish people knew about you that that they they don't? Oh man, tough question. But I, honestly, uh, I think people think that I'm always out and around, out and about. Uh, but I'm really a homebody. I mean, I know you know that from draft prep and just being around. But I really enjoy spending time at home, having my friends, teammates, family over. Um, not a huge like go out to eat, go out for whatever. Um, I really enjoy just kind of spending time alone and spending time with people close to me. Yeah, you're probably one of. I mean, you're you're this. You're probably one of the nicest people. You're definitely the nicest quarterback that I've ever been around, and I'm around a lot of quarterbacks, so that says something. But yeah, you're in the house more than anybody else, so I think it's funny when when people see something like you're out or whatever, whatever, and that is really few and far between. But I think it's interesting. You're also what twenty. Three twenty 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 two man twenty two I'm two thousand baby <laughs> you're a baby um, yeah. as we kind of move into football what like when you look back at all the things that you went through in your life right because I think that quarterback is a unique position because undoubtedly you're gonna go through tough shit right and I think that right now you're in a moment where you're kind of going through something tough injured whatever whatever but like what do you look back on and be like all right. I went through this. Like, what was a defining moment for you? Um, and we've been talking about desirable difficulties a lot, but, like, what was that moment for you? Where like, I went through this. I know that I can make it through anything. Like, anything that fucking happens, I'm good. Yeah, honestly, just my mindset on the whole thing, um, not even having to go back to a specific experience. You know, talking about this year going into this this offseason and this season, I can go back to, you know, competing with Zed Nolan for a starting job. I guess that's the most probably – uh, comparable situation to this, uh, but obviously it's on a whole nother scale now. Uh, but just for me, I always go back to just controlling what I can control, uh, doing things the right way, treating people the right way, um, and obviously, you know, knowing that the work comes first. Uh, I, outside of that, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to be as ready to go this year and be ready to compete, uh, but that's really what I fall back on. At the end of the day, I, I truly believe that, that everything happens for a reason and everything works out exactly how it's supposed to. Uh, as long as, you know, you put in the work to, to, to earn your spot or earn that opportunity. So for me, going into this year, just competing and going through this whole entire year with my injury, uh, obviously, you know, like you said, man, this, I mean, this, as you know, this is one of the probably, if not the toughest, probably the toughest year of my life um, going through this season. Um, and not even from a mental standpoint of, you know, oh, man, I got to go sit in these meetings. Like, that, that's just a no-brainer, you know. Like, that's, that's non-negotiable. Like, that's this is what I love to do. Uh, but honestly, more from the standpoint of, man, like, it's hard to watch guys out there, my teammates out there having fun and everything like that, especially when I had to be, you know, up in the suite before I was walking and things like that. Like, I just wanted to be a part of it. Um, so I thought that was the hardest thing. But I, like I said, I truly believe and fall back on controlling what I can control and just, just trusting in God and believing that everything happens for a reason. Yeah, the first year you came in, a little bit of a different situation than a lot of other guys who get drafted in the first round. It's like, all right, I go to a team, but I really know – that I'm not supposed to be the starter. You had Jimmy there. And then last year you go into an off season where everybody's predict. I mean, you're going to be the starting quarterback, right? You were the starting mm-hmm. quarterback to start the season. What is the difference in the off season between like your rookie season, right? You also didn't know anything about what you're getting into in yeah. year two. Like I'm going to be the starter. Like what is the difference in the off season between those two perspectives? Yeah, going into my first year, um, you know, it was kind of draft prep obviously didn't play the season. So did draft prep from, you know, beginning of October and kind of really didn't stop throwing throughout the whole season until, you know, the following the second January. Um, so I'd say the, the first thing for me was just learning the offense, learning as much as I can, uh, getting the playbook right after the draft and just trying to give myself an opportunity to compete. You know, I think OTAs and, and rookie minicamp for me, uh, my rookie year were a huge 
you know, wake up call or whatever you want to call it, just like realizing the, the details and how much I have to learn. Uh, so really between, you know, we call it 40 days away between OTAs and training camp. That's all I locked in on, you know, just getting scripts. And for me, uh, you know, writing stuff down and, and practicing, making mistakes is the best way for me to learn. Uh, so getting as many scripts as I can and, you know, going through the same stuff this offseason, just making sure I know it as well as I can just to give myself an opportunity to compete uh, going into training camp. And I felt like I put myself in, you know, as good as a position as I could. Uh, wasn't there my rookie year, didn't start, uh, but, you know, gained a ton from that experience and gained a ton, you know, watching and learning from Jimmy that whole entire year. Uh, and then now going into, I guess, fast forward last off season, this past off season, uh, for me, first things first was about getting healthy. I had like little stuff, the finger, um, and just my arm was just, was honestly just dead from throwing that whole entire time. Like, you know, going through two, two fall camps, my last year of college, straight into draft prep, you know, I probably threw three or four, probably three times a week for, you know, maybe a week or two off in there, but three times a week from, you know, October of, of 2020 to January, 2022. Um, so for me, it was just about taking that time off. And then when I do come back, uh, just nailing down the little things, being as clean as I possibly can. And obviously felt like I was at a new place mentally. Uh, but this off season, obviously after, after going through this season, uh, I feel like, you know, I'm taking that to a whole nother level and know a lot more uh, what's going to be asked of me. Yeah. And I don't want to like blow smoke, but I think, so me and you having the opportunity to work with so many different quarterbacks, seeing like the way you prepare and even like I was at your house, what was that playoff game you guys are getting ready to go to? Yeah. Yeah. Dallas. Yeah. So I was at your house the night before and then just waking up and how detailed you were when you weren't playing, like you're injured, seeing all the notes you had about the things that you wanted to work on and prepare for the off season. I think that's what set to me that's what separates you from so many other guys that I see in the NFL is that attention to detail. You already have basically your whole off season broken down. Like I want to work on this, 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 and this, and this is how we're going to do it. And having that attention to detail from somebody who's 22, I, I get so excited about your future, like where you're going. How do you stay in the moment? Like, cause you're like almost a big picture guy when you're thinking about all those things, how do you stay in the moment? Like, all right, this is where I'm at. I got to go lock in for today because you've had a, like a lot of long days, even talking to you all the time when you're on the training table, getting your ankle work done. Like, how do you stay present in that moment? Uh, it's, it's been hard. You know, there's days where it is really hard, uh, especially, you know, like you said, being on the training table so much this year, um, it was hard some days to stay locked in, you know, kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel, honestly, especially knowing, you know, after my first surgery, getting to that point where I know I'm going to have a second surgery. I'd say that was probably the hardest stretch uh, of just from a motivation physically standpoint. You know, I'm, my mindset is obviously I want to get as ready as I possibly can and get my body, you know, I was full lifting, lower body squats, everything like that. I just some little stuff um, from a balance and, and running and single leg standpoint that I just couldn't get past, you know, the little checkpoints that I couldn't get past. I knew I was got through the second surgery. That was the hardest. Um, but I started working with uh, one person specifically kind of a, a mental health slash mental clarity uh, coach, I guess you could call him. Um, and that was the biggest thing for me. Uh, I also journal a lot um, and, and really got really into it. I uh, had kind of stopped during training camp and, and beginning of the season. And then after the injury, uh, kind of realized that that was something that helps me a lot. Uh, just being able to write stuff down, uh, being able to put stuff on paper, whether it's goals, goals for the day. Um, but yeah, that for me, that whole process um, or that whole stretch, uh, I had to write down goals for the day, goals and tasks for the day, every single day, like whatever my goal was, uh, I needed my, my physical therapist, Mike Sola, to give me a goal, give me a challenge for the week, a challenge for the day, you know, just let me know that I'm still progressing. Uh, for me, it, it was all about that. And going into this offseason, it's kind of the same thing. You know, I got big picture on things I need to get better at, but, you know, literally just came off the field right now. And for me, it's like throwing today, like just the little things I want to work on. I know I can't go out there and be like, okay, I want to fix this, 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 and this, and this, you know, it's kind of just kind of have a priority list. Uh, so today, just having that one thing that I'm focused on, that one or two things that I'm focused on and, and nailing it down, recording everything I possibly can and, and just kind of being obsessed with it, you know, just the little details. Uh, I love, like, actually getting to see you throw again, like seeing the videos. It makes me really, really excited about all the progress. And I'm going to jump back a little bit. Um, going to go back to, like, high school, college-ish. When did you realize, right, because I think this is a unique moment for a lot of different guys, when did you realize you were going to be, you were talented enough, like to play in the NFL? And then when did it hit you like, oh shit, I'm about to be like a first round quarterback? <laughs> when do you realize those different things? Uh, 
for me and I'll go back a little bit to high school. Um, high school was all about, I wanted to play college football. Um, and my parents were always realistic with me. They never pushed me one direction, but they just gave me every opportunity and were, were honestly just, just brutally honest with me. Uh, so I remember being in my sophomore year, um, middle of football season, it's a Sunday afternoon. I'm sitting at the table with my parents. I really don't even know if you've heard this story. Um, but they're, I'm, I'm, my aunt and uncle are at the house and I'm saying, and I told them, you know, what, you know, my aunt's kind of doesn't really know a whole lot about football and recruiting. She said, what's your goal? And I want to play division one football, division one quarterback. And then she kind of looks at my mom, like, I'm like, I just said something. <laughs> absolutely and, uh, and, uh, she's like, is that, you know, a realistic, realistic goal? I almost never mind. But yeah, I was, I was, I took that very personally. Uh, but my parents were very brutally honest with me from that point, even before that point. Uh, well, I can't just, just say these things and not, you know, put in the work. You know, I can't just go to practice just like everyone else and wake up and, and lift weights just like everyone else and expect, you know, different results, regardless of talent, you know, because it, it catches up with you in the long run. And, and obviously at this level, it really catches up with you. Uh, so that was first for college. Went to North Dakota State, loved it. Um, was there two years. And then um, spring uh, of – I had just had my hip surgery in February after uh, this my second year. Uh, after my redshirt freshman year, first year, full year starting, um, and I'm sitting in my in my room, and we're trying to find teams to watch. You know, so I'm, I was watching Oregon at the time. This is the spring where I knew we were going to go in and play them. So I was sitting in my room, I had like a little TV and a desk, um, and I was just watching Oregon's games from last year, like they had just played the Rose Bowl. Uh, and uh, my my roommate at the time is yelling at me like, "Yo, come here, come here, come here!" And I'm like, "Hey, let me finish this game quick." You know, I was almost done with the Rose Bowl. <laughs> And uh, it's a, it's like a mock draft on ESPN, and it's like the way you know the way too early. <laughs> and my name is on there. I'm like, you know, I don't know what number is. It was like top five, and I'm kind of like, you know, I'm I'm real confused at this point because COVID had just kind of started. I was still recovering from my hip surgery. I knew I had a whole another year regardless. So for me, I wasn't even thinking about the draft. You know, no one knew. Uh, at least I don't think anyone knew at that point that all the seasons would be canceled and everything like that. Uh, so going into that, that yeah, yeah. So um, at that point, um, I had already kind of started having small conversations with agents, but no meetings or anything like that. And then as obviously as COVID progressed and we saw like the reality of the situation, which was over, you know, four or five, six months span of that, that summer and fall, um, I, I kind of came to the conclusion that this was the best opportunity. Just asking as many people, you know, whether it was you um, as many quarterback guys as I knew, as many draft guys as I could get in touch with, just asking them realistically, you know, what what they would do or what they would tell their son to do in this situation. Thing too. Um, but I trusted in the people around me uh, and I trusted myself and I, I trusted, I wanted people to give me realistic answers. Like people didn't think I was ready to go, then I, I wanted to hear that. You know, I didn't really want anyone. It doesn't help me or anyone else in that situation for, for them to tell me, you know, try to tell me how good I am and how ready I am and, and knowing that I'm not. Uh, but obviously, yeah, made a, made a decision and, I mean, couldn't the draft process, as you know, was was crazy, ups and downs. I really thought my agent really promised me that by the time we got into the green room on draft day, he would know where I'm going. And sure enough, you were in there. We get into the green room on draft day, and I look <laughs> over at my agent. I'm like, "Yo, Pat, man, like, what the fuck is up? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, like, bro, come on. like we got to eat. Like, I just want to know, man. So I'm sitting in there. And that was probably one of the most, you know, stressful yet exciting days of my life, but. Uh, yeah, obviously, get fast forward here, my name called and everything like that. That shit was wild. The, the funny thing about draft night, so we're in the room, and I had told Pat, like, yo, Pat, I, I think he's going to afford it. Because I had the opportunity to talk to John Lynch, like, four days before the draft. And he didn't, like, tell me he was there to pick you or anything like mm -hmm. that. We had a long convo because my dad actually coached John Lynch when he was playing with the 49ers. I mean, wow. with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Like, so way yeah. back when. So my dad coached him. So that goes on, whatever. And I'm like, and then I talked to Justin Fields' agent. He's like, yo, they already told us Justin's not going. Right. And we're in the green room. And and then Zach Wilson, his phone rings, right? And I'm looking over and I'm like, yo, he's gone. And then so after that, I'm looking at Mac Jones. And Mac Jones' agent is like, uh, yeah, you're not going to the 49ers. So at that point, I'm like, oh shit, Trey's about to be, Trey's about to be a 49ers. Oh, yeah. They trade all those picks. Like, we know he's gonna take yeah. a quarterback. So that was a uh, that was super dope. And and something you said earlier, those real conversations that you have with your parents, that's something that I love. Like 
your dad, you and your dad's relationship is something that I think a lot of people would envy if they really knew it. He's like a really supportive father, but he's fucking honest. Like he's really, really honest with you and your yeah. brother. Like that's not <laughs> good enough, right? He's like gonna tell you like not that's that. not good enough. Um, but I think your dad being a co- former college athlete, like he gets to be like really, really honest. Like this is no what doubt. it takes. Either you're doing it or you're not. And I don't think a lot of parents are honest with their kids in that way, right? They always think their kids are doing good enough. Your dad would tell you, like, if he doesn't think you're doing something good enough right now. I, I know he doesn't know the exact no. name. You guys can argue about it, but no, he's telling right. you, like, you know, <laughs> Yeah, see, you, you, were, you were at my house for Dallas, and we, <laughs> we were watching the tape, and uh, I went through that same cut up. Uh, well, you know, not the, not the whole thing, but I went through a few plays, and he's trying to, you know, coach me on shit. I'm like, man. <laughs> I'm like, man. Yeah. But, like, little – I mean, like, little stuff for real. Like, my dad will still come – when my dad's in my house, he'll – He'll sit in my little film room and he'll sit there and watch tape and be like, man, you didn't carry out this fake hard enough, man. You didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, think, think about it. Like, you can, we're playing 10, you know, 11 on 10 if you don't carry out your fake. Like, little stuff like that, that, that you know, is a straight up effort and, you know, mentality thing. Yeah, for sure. All right. I'm about to let you go in a little bit. I know you got to run, but I'm going to clear up a few things. All right. So Sounds you good. always, you always Instagram story stuff, reposting when guys get jobs, X, Y, Z. You put your finger cross <laughs> emoji. Ran, you explain to people, <laughs> yeah, like Ran, Ran, good dude. I talk to him all the time, but explain to people, like, I, I, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like I know what it is. Can you just tell 49ers fans, like, what yeah. it is to you? <laughs> yeah, I, I never talked about it at all. Um, <laughs> so we're trying to stay stay out of the media for it, but uh, I didn't even, uh, you know, I was, I go on Instagram and I'll look at, you know, my teammates' stuff, uh, the team stuff, you know, got stuff like that, stuff about that, you know, pe- my family stuff, stuff like that. I don't spend a whole lot of time, especially over this last year. Like, it's been great mm-hmm. for me to just be be off of social media. Like, I'm not, I'm not on Instagram on daily even. So for me, it's like uh, I just want to support guys. Like, I repost in my Instagram today. Was, uh, this this whole season was probably more of a, a 49ers fan page than anything. You know, like just showing guys support. Ray Ray's got a cool outfit. Aziz got a cool video. Fred, whatever it was, and then obviously the Rand stuff. Uh, so me and Rand got real close over the last. I would say super close, but we we talked on the regular. Um, and he'd bring his boys in. And I would hang out with his kids in the training room. So it was always for me. It was huge. Like just, I mean, they were like a shining light. Like they come in and, and show me how many pushups they could do and stuff like that. So just getting to know someone's family like that, I was super happy for him for the opportunity. So yeah, the, the fingers crossed emojis now. Like man, I'm. I'm Crossing you my just, fingers on the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> <laughs> you just show support. Like, it's your yeah, love. Yeah, yeah totally. Like, uh, I cross my fingers, man. I, I love it here. I don't ever want to be anywhere else. Um, yeah. But, yeah. We'll send people, that to each other in a text know. message. Like, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think people exactly. know. It is probably a cultural thing. Like, we're younger. You're really young. But we're younger dudes. Like, that's just how you would talk to somebody. A little finger cross, you know what I'm saying? We locked yeah. up that before you support. I, I probably that, that, that's probably my number one used emoji too. I didn't know. Kyle told me the next morning. I remember we walked into install meeting. And Kyle's like, "Have you seen everything? People <laughs> saying you're going to the Titans and stuff." I'm like, "I'm like, man, what are you talking about?" And he's like, "I just saw it." He's like, "This, you know, this people talking crazy. People don't know what they're talking about. Whatever." He's like, "He's like, I just thought it was funny this morning." I was like, "He was, he was actually the one that told me about it. I didn't see anything." I think it's really cool you and Kyle's relationship. Just just how you guys talk about all the things that you do, like just your conversations. I think that that's cool. There's not a lot of people who have a great relationship with their coach in the same way that you do. So I think um, that's not to be taken like yeah. that. So that's, that's really special. All right. Now, next thing I want to ask you about. Okay. You mentioned your arm fatigue. I think people were – I've seen you say that and I saw on Twitter, like people talk about it. And I don't want people to get the wrong idea, like that you had – I think that you threw the ball. I don't – coming from your last year of college football to your rookie season, you throw the ball more than you will ever throw a football in your life. Right? Because no this is the only time you do not get a time a break from a football season, training, draft pe- prep right into the season. So yeah. arm fatigue, really, you're just saying, like, you had to throw a lot. There's a lot of NFL guys who might not throw at all until, what, March, April? Yeah. Um, so I – Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're just saying like your arm is just tired from lots of throws. Yeah, it was just honestly just too, I don't I don't know if there's someone out there a quarterback that can throw that much. I mean, it was just realistically going back COVID, <laughs> and then I started throwing in May because I was rehabbing my hip, so that was mm-hmm. when I started getting the ball back in my hand in May. So I threw May from May 2020 all the way through that year draft prep. 
get drafted the next April. So I, at that point, I had been thrown for a year straight and then go through that whole season until the next January. So I'd say probably, I don't know, about 20 months straight of throwing, you know, like I said, probably a week off in there. Maybe, yeah. maybe a, I don't even know if I took a whole week between that whole time. But um, through that whole season, yeah, I threw through for probably 20 months straight. Uh, yeah. Probably three, you, and three long, a week. you and I had the longest draft prep. You, I, and Jamie had the longest draft prep. Yeah. Anybody ever, ever. That's yeah. ever. So I don't think anybody can compare anything to that. Uh, I'm about to let you go because I know you got rehab. Um, I'm, I, I've am i seen Trey throw. I've seen him doing things I'm not going to tell anybody about because I don't know what you guys can and cannot say. But I'm super excited. What, do you, what are you excited for the most about this upcoming season? I, I know it's a lot going on. We ain't going to talk about all the stuff that is going on. But what, what are you excited about? I'm just excited to compete again. Honestly, that was that was one of the hardest things for me this year. Um just not getting to compete. I don't, I never really knew that I would crave it that much, you know, play three sports in high school, like compete a year round and, and now getting into this. Uh, I think this is the first time that I've gone, definitely the longest I've gone without being able to like really compete, you know, in a, in like on a field, you know, I can compete in the weight room, compete and little things like that, but just limits everything. But I mean, I just be able to start running and competing and like really anything I can do. Like I just I feel like I need that again. I'm really excited to just be able to compete and be able to get on the field. Uh, it's, man, it's gonna be so much fun. Like I'm just excited to get started again. OTAs, be around the guys again, and kind of just be a part of it. Can't wait to get you back to Atlanta. Get with the guys. Um, no doubt, you, the best group of quarterbacks out of anywhere in the country who come out and work with us down here. And uh, I think it's a good time. We got a good group of dudes. Give me give, – no the last thing that I need is two songs to play after your interview as I get, you know, ready for for next next couple segments. So give, give me, me a song. Give me, like a genre. give me a genre. No, no, we can do anything. Any song. What is – if you were on your iPod right now or your, at your iPhone, what, what would you put on for the people? Uh – but this morning on the way in, I listened to some boogie like jungle, and then boogie I listened jungle? to little dirt, little dirt. Uh, anything, give anything. Song. Give me a song from Little Dirt. All right, I got you. I got you. Got you. Uh, internet sensation and turn myself in a little older. All right, I'm gonna go internet sensation. Uh, little dirt. These aren't long songs. And you said what's the what's the other song? Internet sensation. What else? Uh, turn, turn myself, myself in. in. Yeah, little dirt. Say less. We're going to give you two songs off Trey List, his playlist. I, I appreciate you so much, bro. I know there's so many other things you could be doing than fucking around uh, on, on AMP with me, but I appreciate it. Thank Hey, no, before good, everybody bro. else leaves, because Trey's leaving, make sure you hit that like button, hit that follow button, so you guys yeah, go ahead, can go ahead and smash that like, like and subscribe, <laughs> man. Hit that follow, man. Uh, that's a bet. Appreciate you, brody. No, nah, I appreciate you, bro. Have a good one. Peace.